मैडम सोहिनी दत्त guest lecturer in the department of economics and politics at vishwa bharati and um, i am very happy that at least we have got a young scholar who has volunteered ha happily there, there was no pressure from me or any of her colleagues i guess so she volunteered happily to speak on a theme which is very close to us because she will talk about constitution and gender in fact you know i also dealt with that in some of my writings and uh, now it is as you know gender is a hot topic and i think we have every reasons to talk about gender and how did constitution resolve the gender disparity uh, through legal means and then you know it it evolved over a period of time as you all agree with me constitution is not a static document it grows because it's a living organism and by being a living organism constitution evolves and adapts to the changing social economic and political circumstances the example being the us constitution which was adopted in 1787 and only with 14 amendments and seven articles it still valid and it still governs the country like united states of america ours is not so old yet our constitution uh, has been guiding us quite uh, freely quite um, religiously for um, uh, more than 70 years and uh, i am very happy to announce that at least we have got young colleagues who are coming out to talk about academic themes uh, so i compliment uh, shohini uh, for having taken this step and i'm sure there will be other scholars other colleagues of my university who will come forward in course of time and um, it's a it's a good kind of beginning but before you talk about um, constitution shohini you know i just would like to begin with an anecdotes uh, of neil bohr the famous physicist you know neil bohr was not superstitious at all you know he was a very hardcore kind of you know i would say agnostic basically he was an agnostic so one day neil bohr uh, invited uh, another physicist friend and he came to his house and he was surprised to see a horse's shoe above the main door of neil bohr's house so he was surprised that he said i i know neil you are not superstitious yet you put the his horse's shoe above the door you know to weed off the evil forces the neil bohr said well okay. i'm not okay. superstitious but you know i'm told by so many of the people that those who believe in it they keep it and those who don't believe in it they also keep it so i am one of them so i think i i you know draw this parallel to our constitution as you know there are many people in the country especially left wing extremists they do not believe in the constitution but when they get arrested when they are subject to legal stipulation they refer to the constitution so the constitution makes them going Uh, like those who are driven by the constitutional values so i think you know, the constitution is one of those documents which not only bind us together but also creates an environment in which those who don't believe in the constitution expresses faith in the in the modalities in which it it um, unfolds so i think the constitution is a very useful important and critical document to our life 
and I still believe that, you know, I think I strongly believe that each of us should know the constitution along with Gandhian thought, because these are the two important, you know, I would say, pillars of us being Indians. So I think um, that way we should keep on discussing the issues of the constitution uh, again and again, not only on the occasion of 26th of November, just a kind of as a, as a matter of ritual, but also as a matter of practice, the, the constitutional values need to be reiterated so that at least we, I mean, I'm not talking about we in the sense that Indians, regardless of caste, regardless of religion, regardless of region, we you know, stand out, we stand together uh, for protecting you know, our values. I'm not talking about you know, geographical boundary of India. I, I still believe that you know, the values make human beings as human beings. So I strongly feel that values need to be sustained and protected. And that way the constitution is a good mode, you know, good instrument, good device to help us sustain those values. So with these preliminary remarks, I just leave uh, Mohini Shohini uh, to start his, to start her you know, uh, speech. Shohini, the floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you for such a lovely and introductory information regarding the importance of constitution. I will again say very good morning to my honorable vice chancellor, sir, all the professors, other honorable dignitaries and dear students. Today is 26th November, 2020, exactly 71 years ago, our constitution was adopted on this very day. So let's observe or celebrate our Sangvidhan Divas. Can I share my presentation? You can, yes. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, Moshwini, go ahead. Uh, host disabled participants screen sharing. You ready? Host disabled screen sharing. Look into. Disabled screen sharing. Yeah, now, now it is done. So any, now it is done. Kyolo, Nimai, Kyotse, problem? Sir, uh, he, she will uh, share his screen, her screen. We have uh, done. She will open her screen. Uh, so, but uh, his, he, she wants to uh, adjust his, her PowerPoint presentation screen. She is trying. That could try. Help call, help call. So any, any problem? No, sir, it's just loading. Okay, okay, okay. Then we wait, no issue. Huh. Started screen sharing. Yes, now it is visible. The Indian Constitution. Yes, it is, now it is visible. Okay, thank you, sir. It is a framework which reflects both will and wishes of the people. It is the embodiment of our desires, 
reflection of our intentions and objectives for which the nation stands and which it will struggle to preserve on this occasion it is my honor and privilege to express my love respect and gratitude to dr bhim rao ambedkar and his team for their remarkable and generous approach towards making the constitution they allowed flexibility in amending the constitution and accommodated various streams of thought above all they relied on the wisdom of the future generation to expand the frontiers of freedom and liberty justice and fraternity fairness and equality they have trusted the future generation to not just amend the text of the constitution but to effectively reimagine and reinterpret it with the changing times of political avatar i will take this opportunity to highlight some of the less known yet most interesting facts about our constitution the original constitution was neither printed nor typed it was handwritten by prem bihari narayan razada in a beautiful italic calligraphy when he was asked how much he would charge for handwriting the constitution he replied not a single penny to the young students it is my request to go through the original manuscript of the constitution there are several artworks lavish on each and every pages of our constitution embracing the age old history of india the artwork this great artwork has been beautified by the famous artist shri nandalal bose and his team from kala bhavan vishwa bharati shanti niketan the artist painted vedic period which was represented by the scene from gurukul the epic period with a visual of ram sita and lakshman returning home and there were vishnu and the depictions of life of buddha and mahavira are also there seen from the court of ashok and vikramaditya we can also find our figures of history represented by akbar shivaji guru gobind singh tipu sultan and rani lakshmi bai drawings of mahatma gandhi shubhas chandra bose are also present there these are the two original copies of the constitution written in hindi and english these are in the library of parliament of india placed in a helium glass to preserve it one thing to be noted that india wrote their own constitution unlike the people of most of the colonial british today like kenya malaysia ghana and sri lanka whose constitution has been written by the british officials at whitehall in london we wrote our own constitution and that was a revolutionary development in a post colonial country there are many perspectives to understand the development 
and role of our constitution, the importance of our constitution. But today I will limit myself within gender perspective. I will celebrate by highlighting the 15 women who were elected in the constituent assembly of 389 people. This makes the representation <laughs> even less than 4%. Out of 15 women personalities, I would like to highlight few of them. Dakshayani Veluthan, she was the first and only Dalit woman to be elected in the assembly. She was also the youngest member of the committee, followed by Hansa Mehta, who on behalf of the women of India presented the assembly by over the independent India. Was the only Muslim woman out of 15 who was elected from Uttar Pradesh. Purnima Banerjee was perhaps one of most strong headed women elected from present day Uttar Pradesh, and she has worked extensively on rural development. Rajkumari Amrit Kaur was from princely states of Punjab and founded All India Institute of Medicine, AIMS. Last but not the least, Sarojini Naidu, the Nightingale of India, we are all aware of, was the first woman, Indian woman, to be elected as the president of India's National Congress in 1927, and also the first woman to be appointed as an Indian state governor in 1947. Now let us recall the circumstances, tragic and turbulent at the time when constitution was being framed. India was partitioned, millions of people were being killed, uprooted, division on the basis of religion. The constitution makers were worried and dreamt of a country where the government will not be theocratic. There will be equality, there will be dignity, there will be social justice, and the most important, there will be gender justice. Moving towards the gender-based rights, I want to first mention women's suffrage, the right to women to vote, in national and local elections. Historically, women were excluded from voting in ancient Greece and Republican Rome, as well as in few democracies that had emerged in Europe in the 18th century. The issue of voting rights for women become intense in the 19th century, particularly in Great Britain, and United States. But these countries were not the first one to grant women the right to vote, not on a national basis. In Great Britain, women's suffrage was first advocated by Mary Wollstonecraft in her book, A Vindication of the Rights of Women, 1792. Gradually, the demand for women's right was becoming more prominent in the liberal intellectuals, notably John Stuart Mill and his wife in 1850. In the early 20th century, women were granted the right to vote in national basis in New Zealand first in 1893, Australia in 1902, Finland in 1906, and Norway in 1913. Now let me quickly discuss the women's suffrage movement in India. It was started in 1917 with the foundation of Women's India Association. It was founded by Mrs. 
Dorothy, Gina Radasa, Margaret Cousin, and Annie Besant. The campaign for voting rights for women ran, ran headlong in the Montague Kelmsford Commission. The commission toured India in 1918, surveyed and reported that women in India were not ready for the rights in voting. Despite intense petition from the Indian women, in this context, I want to quote Mahatma Gandhi. He said, women as the embodiment of sacrifice and ahimsa, a daughter must get equal right to that of a son. However, few women's suffrage did exist before independence. Travancore Cochin was the first princely state to give voting rights to women in 1921, followed by Madras and Bombay in 1921. Franchise was, of course, extremely narrowed. Women could only vote if they possessed qualification of wifehood, property, and education. However, women in India had to wait till after independence to get universal adult suffrage introduced by the Indian Constitution in 1949. Just after independence, the demand for reservation of women's seats in Lok Sabha raised. The issue got intense when the Ministry of Education and Social Welfare reported that women need representation in parliament because it showed a very poor representation in the parliament at that time. I have taken free data from the website of Indian Parliament. Diagram one, data one shows that the evolution of women representation in India and in 2009, we can see it's approximately 14%. In second data, it has clearly mentioned female representation in parliament is 14.44%. And in third data, we can see the number of female is 78, whereas male MPs, four. 54, 64. It becomes very clear that the reservation bill, which has been introduced for demanding 33% of seats in Lok Sabha and legislative assemblies of the state has still not been passed. However, on the positive note, we can found that the local government has slightly different policies. In 1997, they have given women 33% reservation. And in the current scenario, 20 states are having 50% reservations of women in Panchati Raj, naming a few Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Orissa, Jharkhand, etc. I want to cite few of the landmark cases where the constitution, the court, and the people came along to move a step towards gender justice. The earliest right in India pertaining to women was Air India versus Nargis Mirza, where the Supreme Court held that the regulation of Air India pertaining to termination of an air hostess if she were to get pregnant within four years of service was held to be arbitrary and unconstitutional. This judgment is engraved in the history of women's right as an episode of organization to regulate the working conditions of women on par with their male counterpart. Moving to our second case, 
Dattraya versus State of Bombay, where it was held that educational institutions established by the state exclusively for women or the reservation of seats for women in a college does not offend the fundamental right, Article 15, Clause 1, discrimination of state cannot discriminate on the basis of gender. Moving to our third case, Rajesh Gupta versus State of Uttar Pradesh, where the court held that reservation of 50% of posts in favor of female candidates are not arbitrary. The above judgments are a clear example of how Supreme Court is protecting the dignity of the constitution by recognizing and safeguarding the rights of women in life, in the public space, as well as in workplace, in personal life. Moving to our fourth case, Vishakha and others versus State of Rajasthan. The Supreme Court laid down guidelines to regulate the conditions of working women. It was directed that guidelines would be strictly observed in all workplaces for preservation and enforcement of right to gender equality of working women. Case five holds the equal right and dignity of women in religious aspects. It became very prominent in the recent time when the Supreme Court gave the judgment, gave the judgment on Sabri Mala case and triple talaq, which brought an end to the century old practices of curtailing of women's right. The court recognized those customs within the law of Article 13, Clause 3A, unconstitutional. But Article 13, Clause 1, which were found in derogation of fundamental rights. Moving to our last case for today and the most recent one, Naftet Singh Johar versus Union of India. Five judge bench found that section 377 discriminates against individuals on the basis of their gender identity, violating the fundamental rights, Article 14 and Article 15 of Indian constitution. Further, it violates the right to life, dignity, and autonomy of, person, of personal choice under Article 21. Finally, they found that it inhibits an LGBT individual's ability to fully realize their identity, the freedom of expression under Article 19, Clause 1A. They have also referred to the recent court cases in Nalsa where the identity of transgender has been recognized and Puttuswami where the right to privacy has been recognized as the fundamental right. Held that the Supreme Court held that the constitution guarantees all citizens independent of their gender identity their fundamental rights. The court is concerned with safeguarding constitutional morality rather than popular morality. Thus, it decriminalizes section 377. Concluding my today's topic, I want to point one contemporary challenge towards Indian constitution. Several ideas of constitution remained an unfinished pursuit. In particular, quest for equality remained an unfinished pursuit and an ideal worth striving for. Translating this essence into Hindi, I want to quote one line from my favorite book, one of my favorite book, Wings of Fire by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. 
काश हर हिंदुस्तानी के दिल में जलती हुई लौ को पड़ लग जाए और उस लौ की परवाह से पूरा आसमान रोशन हो जाए थैंक यू जय हिंद प्रश्न नेबो की ना नेबो ना ऑब्जर्वेशन दे प्रश्न खूब भाला बोले चो खूब भाला बोले चो एवं आमत धारणा यू है पोटेंशियल ये तो क्या रहता है स्ट्रेंथन करते वाले कुल व्यापार नहीं और मोर लिटरेचर टाइप तू कंसल करो तो मैं एक तो बहुत भाला बोई है नाम बात दी दी चो सीमा दी बुबोयर द सेकंड सेक्स अच्छा अच्छा तो 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 मैंने फेमिनिस्ट है आज के दिन केट 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 मिलर मिलर ये लेखा गुलो जो जो ना जो ना पर्सनल इज पॉलिटिकल कंटेम्पोरि लिटरेचर मैरि उन्स्टन क्राफ्ट तो भूत हो गए हरियर टेलर भूत हो गए जन स्टुअर्ट मिलो तो भूत हो गए आज के कंटेम्पोरि फेमिनिस्ट जरा तीन देखे मन No ideological churning that's taking place in India. Hmm. Hmm. Now, today's day, the Shabai Baron says Hindu has become a dominant force. Hmm. I mean, I say that Hinduism is not going to be unified. I mean, Hindus can't be unified. So, a Hindu in Bengal or Hindu in Tamil Nadu, a Brahmin in Bengal, Brahmin in Tamil Nadu, Akash Patel part. स्पिरिट Shy away from questions. If you okay, can't sir. tackle, yes, then you admit that that I don't know. Because you have to solve it. Should we do it? How many people have problems? All of you have done it. It's at least that um, effort to do it. Have it. So now I'm more than Nimai. Can Nimai? Nimai, listen. Sir, please. Nimai, please. Sir, sir. 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 माइंडल Why can't the sense of morality and equality and justice that is in our constitution be open in our societal mind today? Sir, this question is very like in academic sphere is very good, but I will answer this question because of several age-old traditions and mainly the ideology of patriarchy, what we are ingrained from our birth. this becomes very difficult for us to relearn those traditional moralities or ideological beliefs that has been inputted in us from our childhood and it becomes very tough for us to modify the whole ideology of society so it will become some time but hopefully we can do it nimai i am going to add to the chai sir please i am going to add to the chai कारण सैनी जो उत्तर दिल से लाइन अफ थिंकिंग खूब भलो एम्पेरिकल एविडेंस दीते चाहिए इट्स अल्सो फर सोहिनी टू 
लिसन टू मी केयरफुली कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट असेंबली डिबेट्सটা যদি দেখো लास्ट जो स्पीच था अंबेडकर दिए ছিলেন 25 नवंबर 1949 সেই স্পিচটার মধ্যে अंबेडकर বলছেন যে আমি দুঃখী এবং সুখী একই সময় মানে আই অ্যাম হ্যাপি এন্ড অলসো আপসেট এট দা সেম টাইম তো কেন কেন বলছেন তার কারণ উনি বলছিলেন যে আমরা যে 3 বছর ধরে যে এফার্টটা দিলাম এই এফার্টটার ফলে যে ডেমোক্রেটিক গভর্নেন্স ডেমোক্রেটিক পলিটিক্যালটা ভাবছি সেটা কি আলটিমেটলি হবে তখন উনি বলছেন যে কেন হবে না এটার উত্তর দিচ্ছেন উনি এটার উত্তর দেওয়ার ক্ষেত্রে তিনটে কারণ দিয়েছেন মানে যেটা যার সঙ্গে তুমি এটা লিংক করতে পারো এই যে মরালিটি বা ইকুয়ালিটি যে সেন্সটা মানে জেন্ডার ফ্রি আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ডিং বা জেন্ডার প্রেজুডিসেস এগুলো কেন যাচ্ছে না তার কারণ হচ্ছে মাইন্ডসেট এই মাইন্ডসেটের কথা আম্বেদকর কিন্তু 1950 সালের 25 নভেম্বর যে স্পিচটা দিচ্ছেন তারপরের দিন কনস্টিটিউশনটা কান্ট্রিকে দেওয়া হবে সেখানে তিনটে কারণ দিয়েছেন উনি প্রথম কারণ দিয়েছিলেন যে আমাদের মধ্যে কনস্টিটিউশনাল মরালিটি এই আইডিয়াটা নেই এর মানে কি এর মানে হচ্ছে গিয়ে অ্যাডহারেন্স টু দা রুলস এন্ড রেগুলেশনস এটা কিন্তু সামাও দি আদার উই ট্রাই টু ডিফাই রুল ডিফাইন্স এর মধ্যে আমরা একটা আনন্দ পাই আমরা জানি না এখানে হয় কি না এস কো দিল্লি তো দেখতাম যে ট্রাফিক লাইট জাম্প করে ছেলেরা খুব হিরো দেখা হিরোইজম দেখাতো মানে ডিফাইন্স অফ রুলস তো তখন আম্বেদকর বলেন কনস্টিটিউশন মরালিটি তো চেটাই এটা একটা ইনগ্রেইন ধারণা ইন আস টু অ্যাকসেপ্ট রুলস অ্যাজ দে আর কারণ রুলস আর মেন্ট টু contribute to the well being of the people at, at large hai na amra boli na je you show me the face i'll show you the room tamane constitutional morality kono organic roots amader deshe toiri hoy ni tar karon onek colonialism ekta boro karon sobche boro karon otai ache eta hocche ek number karon second karon ta chair phole jeta hocche amader deshe gandhi ekta boro khoti kore geche ambedkar er boktobo eta keno गांधी थे ग्रेट मैन थियर आईडिया गांधी हम बाबा भगवान मन करते बुजते साउथ इंडिया ते कास्ट इज सो डिसाइसिव एंड सो डेवस्टेटिंग तो से जनो उनी बोलसे जे कास्ट जत दिन थाकबे तत दिन किंतु आमार देशे जे फैटर्निटी एटा कोनो दिन हबे तो उनी बोलसे जे एटा बॉटनी एटा कथा बाबर करछेन एंडोस्मोसिस जे एंडोस्मोसिस जे एटा ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जे हमरा गाछे सूर्य र आलो थेके खावन नै दलित तो 
कन्स्टिट्यूशन If not, are we not violating the constitution? So, any first, then shall we? Yes, we are not following the constitutional ideology. Perhaps in, I think this will take some time. And how, sir, has already told the. ideology and the thinking of ambedkar that it needs time ambedkar also quoted that if the people ruins the country by not valuing the constitution he will burn the constitution himself so i think one aspect i want to add the power aspect those who break the rule either of power of patriarchy power of governance power political power or class power caste power gender power i will very much <laughs> aware of the power in day to day life i also want to add one more thing that is conservatism to it india is a very conservative in nature though we express very liberal perspectives but conservatism is rooted in deep in us from the school level so sir the please add something more to it the dekho sohini ami mane ami je ager answer ta bolna ta shoi eta continuity parthok parthok eta prashno koreche parthoprotim sarkar sarkar right partho ami tomake prashno ta onno bhabe bolar chesta korchi je ghore ki amra democratic कौन प्रश्न भेबे देखे उत्तर भेबे देखे आज के दिन बेंगले जानिना कतले जन्माले खुशी हई मे जन्माले दुखी हई क्योंकि लोके भूले जाए ऐलर जो एक मेर दरकार खूब प्रयोजन एवं देश आज के जेंडर स्टैटिस्टिक्स देखो मेर संख्या ऐले एक हजार मेर संख्या सतशो सतर जन सार्कमस्टान देखे माइंडसेटारेपारेटे प्रथम गांधी की मेक दरकार डेमोक्रेटिक रिपब्लिक सोनी प्लीज फार्स्ट 
this question i think has many perspectives to it so which perspective should i tell territorial territorial or gender perspective or social perspective caste perspective religious perspective so each and every perspective has seen sudden change the british india suddenly become free and all the princely states came together so this question is very like large in nature so which perspective right. i will focus this guide me <laughs> इंडिया <laughs> in accordance with its with her own political economic and ideological priority like the sovereignty right yeah. na there is no force beyond india which will govern india's governance okay. a democratic man is a democracy dekho dutu artho ache ekhono ambedkar er kotha bolte hoy ambedkar bolchen डेमोक्रेसिमिकेटासमोक्रेसिंग इम्लीमेंटेड राजा अस्ट्रेलिया रानी गवर्नर जेनरल कैनेडा रानी गवर्नर रिपब्लिक नंडिया is a republic because indian president is elected ha jodi indirectly elected but he is elected so republicanism manas che election of the head of the state to ei tinte theke boye jacche je constitution constitution jemon chalu holo chalu howar pore when india became sovereign democratic republic tar mane hocche india is sovereign mane india is supreme in so far as her governance is concerned in so far as her policy designs are concerned in so far as her foreign policy is concerned democratic current politically amra shobai elect korchi our government our republic current head of the state is elected sei ta change eta chilo na age eta ekdom e chilo na amader age election e Uh, even 1935 government of india acted for 1937 election holo shekhane only 11% of the total population vote diyechilo kono shekhane vote te onek condition chilo property qualification academic qualification itadi itadi tar phole ekta limited franchise chilo je franchise ta kintu expanded holo in uh, 1914 52 te 49 e jodi amra constitution ta pelam কিন্তু ইন্ডিয়া বিকেম স্টিল রিমেইন আ কলোনি কারণ রাজা গোপাল আচারি তখন গভর্নর জেনারেল হলেন এবং রাজা গোপাল আচারি ওয়াজ ডমিনেটেড বাই দা কুইন অফ ইংল্যান্ড এন্ড হি কন্টিনিউড অ্যাজ গভর্নর জেনারেল টিল 26 জানুয়ারি 1950 মানে যদি বড় স্বাধীনতা এটা আমরা ভুল করি টেকনিক্যালি এবং তুমি স্টুডেন্ট অফ পলিটিক্যাল সায়েন্স তোমার জানার দরকার ইন্ডিয়া বিকেম ফ্রি ইন দা রিয়েল সেন্স অফ দা টার্ম অনলি অন 
26 January 1950. तारा क्या किंतु इंडिया वास स्टील ए कॉलोनी। वही राजगोपाल अच्छा नहीं कि नॉमिनेट करे चले क्वीन ऑफ इंग्लैंड। सो ही कंटिन्यूड एस गवर्नर जनरल एंड एवरीथिंग वास गवर्न्ड इन हिस नेम। ये तो अपुन प्रेसिडेंट एल्ला में हाँ। तो इटा आर रिपब्लिक टा लखुनी भाबा हुए चिलो। जामरा � लास्ट क्वेश्चन Poddini Balaram, though in the chat box answer has been given by Professor Apurva Kumar Chattopadhyay, still let me seek the comments from Sohini and you, sir. What about comment of special status kept by Ambedkar for next 10 years? Today it is extended for more than 70 years. Instead of basing on caste and religion, should it not have been deprivation due to economic conditions? I will pass this question to sir. I won't comment. <laughs> सर उत्तर दाओ सर आपने बोलो चेस्टा करो ट्राई क्या पूछे ना कि कारण थकते কি কেস তাই বলে যাচ্ছে সুপ্রিম কোর্টে দাঁড়িয়ে বলছি আইটা খুব বিখ্যাত কেস হয়েছিল সুপ্রিম কোর্টে এই ব্যাপার নিয়ে যেটা প্রতিনিধির উত্তরটা দিয়ে দেবে সংসদে হ্যাঁ আমি তো আই লাস্ট প্রতিনিধি টু রেসপন্ড হোয়াট ইউ ইউ হ্যাভ ইন মাইন্ড প্রতিনি ম্যাডাম প্লিজ আনমিউট ইয়োরসেলফ নামটা ভুলে যাচ্ছি আমি প্রতিনি বলো না ম্যাডাম কোর্টে কেস অন ওবিসি economic status can you hear me huh? yeah yeah please. yes yes carry on please yeah 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 i, I just basically wanted your opinion that uh, because these are kind of uh, so many debates going on in this point that's why i wanted your opinion in the sense that there are so many um, issues related to that the and uh, the kind of uh, other side was kind of arguing saying that people who have already got that status and are now well off but there are other people who are not well off they are not included uh, into that constitution uh, so therefore mm -hmm. why not come the equality based on economic that's the that's the point that i was trying to raise it could be like say for example today there are um, uh, many other communities uh, which has not included in that particular status like parsis or like other thing they also have poor people and but they then they never are getting this kind of special seats or special this things you know so instead of keeping it on that i mean why not have it people who are uh, i mean people can change because it is changeable the why not indian government do that yes, because yes. political that people are afraid to go against the uh, minorities or something like that that is happening i mean i don't know what to say you know that's what i want to know i'm not a political person madam thank you very much for your intervention i just would like to draw your attention to one supreme court judgment okay. uh, of 1992 Okay. Sahani, Indra Sahani case. Okay. Here, Supreme Court introduced ex exactly the idea you are talking about, the idea of privy layer, and you know that that in case of OBC, those who earn eight lakhs of rupees a year, they are to be excluded from getting all the benefits which other OBCs are entitled to get. Now, this is a legal uh, response. The second point, you know, I am. um i agree with you notionally notionally because i think it is little it it sounds little unfair that those who have appropriated all the 
benefit so far simply because of accident of birth uh, uh, cannot be justified logically but uh, as you know uh, when this sort of campaign came up especially ambedkar started this campaign that time dalits and especially those who were at the margins of society uh, because of the accident of birth they really suffered immeasurably and um, i think the the suggestions of ambedkar and his colleagues for reservation um, in the constitution was drawn on this kind of calculation and yes ambedkar also uh, argued at that point of time that you know let us go for reservation for 10 years because if you keep on giving reservation to a particular group of people they become dependent and they will uh, stay away or shy away from efforts to improve their social economic uh, position but anyway as you know uh, in india it is not merely the uh, the legal system but the politics politics appears to have Uh, prevail over other considerations and as a result uh, no none of the political parties whether you talk of congress whether you talk of bjp cpm cpi nobody would like to do away with the reservation plan simply because everybody is governed by what i call vote politics so i think that's the reality so that's exactly sort of what i reality, thought mm. so long this remains unchanged um, i don't think your optimism of doing away with reservation and uh, applying uh, economic criteria for giving reservation may not be you know feasible but you know as i said i agree with you notionally but um, uh, keeping in mind the reality keeping in mind the political reality of india i don't know whether any of the political parties you know uh, will uh, take the risk of saying against a reservation as such so it's a good question but you know i don't think there is a conclusive answer to this question in view of the you know complicated social economic and political situations in which india is placed so yeah thank you sir uh, i think we are around 2 uh, 1240 and uh, in my chat box there is no more question so with this interactive session and before to hand over to you sir for concluding uh, i would like to extend uh, our heartfelt gratitude though so in is our extended family member still within very short notice is very kind enough to accept our invitation and i am really owe to our professor sandeep basu sarva adhikari da and professor somu chakravarti head department of economics and politics for their joint effort i am able to find out uh, madam sohini for our today's speaker so all all of them let me extend our heartfelt gratitude and thanks uh, on the day of this constitution day observation so may i now request you sir to take part and to 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 uh, conclude this session officially দেখো কনক্লুশনে আমি এটাই বলবো একদম প্রথমে তো সৈনিকে জানাবো ধন্যবাদ ধন্যবাদ জানাবো এই কারণে যে ভালো বলেছে তা নয় ধন্যবাদ জানাবো এই কারণে সৈনিক সাহস দেখিয়েছে আমাদের বাঙালিদের মধ্যে প্রবলেম হচ্ছে আমরা কথা বলি কিন্তু কাজ করি না মানে আমরা হচ্ছে জ্ঞানদা জ্ঞানদাময়ী বা জ্ঞানদাময় জ্ঞানময় সেই অর্থে সোহিনী তুমি একটা গ্লাস সিলিং ভাঙলে এবং তুমি একটা নতুন রাস্তা তৈরি করলে আমি আজকে কথা বলছিলাম আমার সহকর্মীদের সঙ্গে যে যারা ইয়াং স্কলার আছে যারা চায় বলতে যাদের কাজকর্ম প্রেজেন্ট বলতে চায় এরকম একটা সিরিজ যদি আমরা করি হ্যাঁ ধরো ওয়ার্ক ইন প্রোগ্রেস ওয়ার্ক ইন প্রোগ্রেস এগুলো ধরুন বেশিরভাগ বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে আছে ওয়ার্ক ইন প্রোগ্রেস আমার বক্তব্য হয়তো এত লোক শোনে না একশো তেত্রিশ জন পার্টিসিপেট করেছে সোহিনী ইউ শুড ফিল হ্যাপি দ্যাট ইন বিশ্বভারতী 
there are 133 participants who are listening to you and who appreciate you. And I'm sure with this kind of appreciation, you will be empowered and encouraged to address us again in future after having done some more research on this particular theme. Constitution is a very interesting document, um, interesting document, interesting idea. Constitution is a very important thing. I recently read a book called Constitution Identity. I read a book called Constitution Identity. I read a book called Constitutional Identity. Constitution is an identity. It's a living document. So, actually, the Constitution is the Constitution. But in America, the Constitution is the Constitution. Why? So, the question is, why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about this? So, I think that we are an incipient democratic country. We are not the human being. There is a caste, a hierarchy, a society, a village. You can see that in the world, the local ground, first generation learners, the first presence of the university, the first generation 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 of the university. At least, the project that you started, the first generation of the university, I would like to welcome you, I would like to welcome you, and I would like to welcome you, and now you are part of the faculty. So you have a moral responsibility you know, to pursue this further. So I am very happy. 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 I am कि तो निमाय एकदम से ही आगे के बाप प्राण कोड़ी भी एक दान तारी लगी तारा तारी निमाय आगे से एक चली जाती है वो ना समझे कंप्यूटर साइंस से चला जुदा जीते वों राज वों शांत हो जाए वों कुबेर कुछ आठ सबसे से से आमी धन्नो बात जनाई आमदे पार्टिसिपेंट्स थे तारा ऐसे एनकरेज कुछ इरपोड़े आम আমরা জানুয়ারি মাসে আমরা we are likely to get a professor from Germany তিনি বলেন বুদ্ধিজীবী মেরু পড়ে তিনি is an expert global expert on বুদ্ধিজীম আর February তে we'll get somebody from Yale University philosopher with working on global order global order epidemic COVID COVID নিয়ে কিছু একটা বলবেন তো এটা আমরা চালিয়ে যাব Plus, after the beginning of the day, we will start with this. We will start with this work in progress. We are young, we are interested. We don't have to do it every day, but we will start with a semester. So, it will add value to our existence as an academic community. So, we will start with this visibility. We will not have to do it anymore. So, we will start with this. 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 यांग जरा आचे जरा काज कम वो कोर्चे बाबेशना कोर्चे विभिन्न थीम नहीं तादेक वो एनकरेज करो ताहले एजे सीरीज टेक वाता भापची टाम ना चालू कर दो वो 2021 थे तो भाई के दोनों बात देखी हर थाकून चुस्तो थाकून कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन माने किंतु के डॉक्यूमेंट ना है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन माने चे मूल्य बोध � एवं दशे उन्नति हो बे एवं शेटा किंतु विश्व भारती लीडरशिप में ते पड़े कारण आमले अमरत के जगह याची जेटा तो इडी करें चेन एमोने एक जोर बिखा तो मानुष इन्हीं किंतु सबसे में विश्वास करते हैं वो जो एकी शूत्रे बाधिया ची स्वाहस्त्र जीवन एकी शूत्र क्या ये ते क्या की साथे कोड बा� सर एक तो मौत मौत दिए चं सांतो था आमदे कंप्रेसिंग टीचर सांतो संकोड था जो उन्हें जो प्रश्न टा करे चिलेन व्हाट चेंज्स थो इन द कंस्टिट्यूशन एसेंबली एनेक्टेड द कंस्टिट्यूशन दैट डिक्टेड इंडिया टू बी ए सोवरेन डेमोक्रेटिक रिपब्लिक उन्हें आपना मौत मौत दे पड़े एक तो सुंदर मौत the sole communist party member in the constituent assembly that many of the fundamental rights have been framed from the point of view of a police constable. It has Santodar Gyapna Motamotariya Ki 
দিয়েছেন যে সোমনাথ লাহিরী বাবু তখনকার এই চিফ এম পার্টির মেম্বার ছিলেন এই মতটা উনি আর কি দিয়েছেন না 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 এটা এটা ধরো খানিকটা শান্ত ইজ পার্টলি কারেক্ট পার্টলি রং সোমনাথ লাহিরী ওয়াজ ওয়ান অফ দি স্পিকারস when fundamental rights were being discussed on the floor of the assembly ekhane jeta holo somnath dairit to bhavna chinta chilo er shonge sobche beshi important je korechen hocche nm joshi nm joshi tt krishnamachari ar ak ir ei tumi shanto acho tumi shanto acho गांधीबादीरा जेटा चेहरे जे सी कुमार इत्यादि गांधी जो आईडिया पंचायत তারপরে গোরক্ষা হম তারপরে হচ্ছে ভিলেজ স্বরাজ এই আইডিয়া গুলোকে ফান্ডামেন্টাল রাইটস এর মধ্যে রাখা হোক এই নিয়ে প্রচুর ডিবেট হচ্ছে ডিবেট হওয়ার পরে আম্বেদকর স্টুড আউট এবং সাপোর্টেড বাই নেহরু এবং প্যাটেল আম্বেদকর বলছেন যে গ্রামকে তোমরা যে এত সমস্ত হাইলাইট গ্লোরিফাই করছো গ্রাম ইজ দা বেস অর দি ইউ নো দি এপিটোম অফ অল সুপারস্টিশিয়াস বিলিফ रफा हलो क পরবর্তীকালে গোলকনাথ কেস আর কেশবানন্দ ভারতী কেস এই দুটো কেসে কিন্তু আবার দেখা গেল যে স্টেট পলিসি কিন্তু একটা সোশ্যালিস্ট সোসাইটির দিকে আমাদেরকে নিয়ে যাবে সেই ওইখানে একটা বেসিক স্ট্রাকচার বলে একটা ডকুমেন্ট তৈরি হলো উনিশশো সালে কেশবানন্দ ভারতী কেস সুপ্রিম কোর্ট বললো যে ভারতবর্ষের সংবিধানে কিছু কিছু ফিচার আছে যেগুলো বেসিক টু দা কনস্টিটিউশন একটা হচ্ছে গিয়ে ডেমোক্রেসি সেকুলারিজম দি রুল অফ ল কনস্টিটিউশন মরালিটি মানে কোন স্পেসিফিক ভাবে ডিফাইন করেননি কিন্তু ওরা বলেছেন যে ভ্যালুজ উইচ আর ক্রিটিক্যাল টু দা কন্টিনিউটি অফ দা কনস্টিটিউশনাল মরালিটি এগুলো ইম্পর্টেন্ট কারণ ডিফাইন করেন এই কারণে কারণ বলছেন আজকে যেটা বেসিক স্ট্রাকচার ভাবছি কালকে সেটা নাও হতে পারে সেই জন্য ওরা ডিফাইন করেননি যে সাত বেঞ্চের ডিভিশন বেঞ্চ ছিল কেশবানন্দ ভারতী কেসে কিন্তু অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম आगे छो ना सोमनाथ So, thank you, sir. We may conclude our session today. Sir, may we wind up the meeting? Sir, sir. Yeah, bond the kudda hawa ki. Ah, thik 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 aaj. Jada jee, please leave, close the meeting. Thank you all.